What I'm asking you is, yeah, you went through a hard season, and yeah, another one might be up ahead, but what are you producing in the middle? I want to shake you out of thinking there's a right time for you to produce. And God says, produce in the areas that seem like you should be retreating. Today, I just want to give um, a caution that this is not about a sermon series. This is about a disposition. This is not about a catchphrase or a word of the year. This is about a decision that all throughout the year, in May, we will be anchored. In July, we will be anchored. If every state and city is open and COVID is gone, we will be anchored. Christmas 2021, we will be anchored. And I'm telling you this because God gave this prophetic word and I want us to look deeper into this. And, and, and as we look at this, I thought today we would look at a character whose life has been anchored through all the different situations, circumstances, um, um, trials that he went through. And, and sometimes Bible stories are really ethereal, but there's a few that I just relate to. Like, I feel like I know that person and I really would have been friends with them if, you you know, I was there or they were here or whatever happened in that way. And one of those characters that I just feel like is a gangster, his name is Paul. Y'all know Paul? Today we're going to journey with Paul because Paul was a gangster that lived in the deep. And I begin to think about if anybody was anchored through whatever they went through, it was Paul. Uh, let me give you some understanding of who this man Paul is because everybody thinks that Paul is, is, is some type of um, just good Bible character. No, 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 no. Paul was a gangster. He was like a representing mascot. He was killing Christians. And then he had a Damascus Road experience where God touched him. And then people were shocked because he transformed his life the same way some people are going to be shocked as you transform your life. Somebody needed that prophetic word right there. And, and, and then a guy named Ananias was praying and God told him, he said, yo, 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 go um, and touch hands on, on Paul. You talking about Paul? You talking about a Paul that two weeks ago tried to kill me? He, he said, yeah, I've changed his life. And, and, and he was like, like, Paul from Damascus, Paul? That's how he got the name in my mind, P. Diddy, because he was Paul from Damascus. He was like, you want me to go lay hands on P. Diddy? And he was like, yeah, I want you to do it. He literally has a, 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 a moment where his eyes were blind, and, and it represents a salvation. Like, you, your eyes were blind, and then you could be able to see. And then Paul, because God touched his life, he went on a tangent of representing and telling people about the gospel. And the reason I relate to Paul so much is because Paul didn't go to seminary. Paul didn't go to school for it. God touched Paul's life, and Paul was like, because I've been transformed, now i got to go transform somebody else's life. And I don't know who needs to hear this this right now but some of the qualifications that people are telling you you need to do what God has called you to do yes you need to study to show yourself approved yes you need to make sure that you can rightly divide the word but just telling somebody I was here last week and now I'm here this week that's your testimony we overcome him the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the words of our test Paul did not take two years to start sharing what God did in his life and if you're going to live in the deep, that means God changes me on a Tuesday and I'm telling somebody about it on Wednesday. Yeah, and, and, and Paul, he begins to go on this journey. And because he was so radical for Christ and he was representing everywhere he went, he got, uh oh, wait for this, persecuted. See, when you're in the deep, persecution comes. When you're in the deep, they want to make posts about you. When you're in the deep, they want to have conversations about you. When you're in the deep doing what God called, and see, this is why many people swim back to shore. It's because they don't want criticism for obeying God. But if I look back at the Bible, everybody's not going to agree that you moved there. Everybody's not going to agree that you gave that up. Everybody, you will not have committee decision on the calling God has called you to. And Paul began to get persecution because he was walking in purpose. Wow. Don't pray for purpose without knowing you're going to get persecution. Uh, let me, I, that ain't even a part of my message. Can I tell you how Paul, I'm just trying to set you up to understand who we're talking about today. And maybe some of you can relate. 
Paul had a rap sheet. Paul, like, he had a price on his head. Paul was beaten 39 lashes five times. You know the scourging we watch at um, Easter that everybody be closing their eyes when they're watching Jesus get beat? Paul got that five times. Like, like, I want you to understand, he was beaten with rods three times. He was stoned once. Have you ever walked outside and gotten stoned? Like, like, I need everybody to understand, like, he was shipwrecked three times. Like, three Titanic experiences. Like, who goes through the Titanic drowning three times? Paul did. Paul got robbed. He had rats, people around him that betrayed him. He had ops in his crew, ops in the street, ops in the sea. And somebody's like, Sally, ops. <laughs> he had opposition. He had opposition in the country, opposition in the city. He even had insomnia. The baby couldn't even sleep. He needed some melatonin gummies. That's what we give our kids. He needed, <laughs> like, I'm trying to tell you, he had all of this on top of all the regular issues people had. But Paul was so anchored to his faith in Jesus that he wrote one-fourth of the New Testament. He probably wrote some of your favorite scriptures in between beatings. What are you doing between your losses? I got to scoot back for him. What are you doing between your disappointments? Between um, 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 scourging two and three, wow. what comes out of you? Oh, I feel this thing. There are too many of us that are waiting for right situations to produce. But Paul was one of those that was so anchored that in the moment that he wasn't in a trial, he was producing something for God. In the moment he wasn't being shipwrecked, he was giving something that God placed on the inside of him. What I'm asking you is, yeah, you went through a hard season and yeah, another one might be up ahead, but what are you producing in the middle? I want to shake you out of thinking there's a right time for you to produce. And God says, produce in the areas that seem like you should be retreating. 2020 made people retreat when God was looking for you to produce. And what I'm saying to you in this moment right now, that Paul was so anchored that he said, God, whatever you want to do, whatever and however you want to use it, if I only have a small amount of time, uh, uh, was he in a prison cell when he wrote it? Was he being beaten when he wrote it? But he said, I'm always going to produce. I'm going to tell you some of your favorite scriptures were written because Paul was anchored. Can I show you this? Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Guess who wrote that? Paul, um, whatever you do, work with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians 3.23. Guess who wrote that? Paul. And my God will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. Guess who wrote that? Paul, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I'm feeling this. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Guess who wrote that? Paul, was it between beating one or beating four? Was it between loss two or loss six? Don't be anxious for anything. What, Paul wrote this? He literally tells us, don't be anxious for anything. But in every situation, pray while I'm getting stoned. Pray while I'm getting robbed. Petition God while they're talking about me. Stand firm and continue to confess and talk to God. He said, but don't just pray. Pray and petition with thanksgiving. Why am I thankful for this? He's trying to tell us what happens when you're anchored. He says, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Philippians 4, 6. Guess who wrote it? Paul. Love is patient. Love is kind. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. Guess who wrote this one? It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Corinthians 13, 4. Guess who wrote that? Paul, let me give you one more. Let's stay together. Loving you weather. Whether times are good or bad, happy or sad. Guess who wrote that? Al Green wrote that. That wasn't, that wasn't Paul. What, what I'm trying to say to you, some of y'all is like, did, who? Al Green, look him up later. It's a good song. Um, what I'm trying to say to you 
is that Paul produced in the midst of persecution. I came to declare and prophetically tell somebody that no matter what happens to you this entire year, no matter if your bank account doesn't go up, no matter if anybody verifies you or not, no matter if you sell 100,000 copies of the song or not, no matter if you start the business, you will produce even though you are being persecuted. You will produce even though you have not seen the promise. You will produce even though it seems like problem after problem. Somebody say, I will produce. But you only produce when you're anchored to something who's not moving. And the truth of the matter is the only reason Paul was able to produce like this is because Paul was anchored. Friend, with the support of heroes like you, TBN is beaming the hope and grace of Jesus around the world in multiple languages. This month, for your gift of support in any amount, we're excited to offer best-selling author Dr. David Jeremiah's book, Forward. Take a moment to visit tbn.org slash go forward. God bless.